welcome to my class dear students so today we are doing some important sections uh, some about some patients and some events that influenced the victorian age or victorian era so let us first study the influence of karl marx and sigmund freud the impact karl marx and sigmund freud produced the, during the victorian age you know karl marx the great german philosopher and political economist he was a famous german philosopher he was born and brought up in uh, german but he later settled in london he went to london german philosopher and political economist published the das kapital in 1867 he published the, his uh, seminal work but the most important work the das kapital in 1867 and in association with the engels frederick engels he also wrote another book communist manifesto when both of them were in london so karl marx the great german philosopher and political economist published the his das kapital in the year 1867 karl marx was born in born in 1818 May 5th and he died in March 1883 in London UK see what is marxism of course what is your idea about marxism or uh, communism marxism marxism is a political and economic way of organizing society where the workers own the means of production what is marxism Marxism is a political and economic way of organizing the society where the workers own the means of production. In a Marxist economic way, the means of production are wholly owned and controlled by the workers or the proletariat. Socialism, it is only a mild deviation. Socialism is a way of organizing society in which the means of production are owned and controlled by the proletariat proletariat means working class people the working class proletariat that is socialism socialist socialism is a way or method of organizing society in which the means of production are owned and controlled by the proletariat or the working class so in fact karl marx traced to the root of all economic injustice to the concept of capitalism according to karl marx the philosopher the german philosopher and political economist he found out he discovered the root cause of all economic injustice he found out the reason for the difference between the house and the have nots or the rich and the poor according to him the root of all injustice to the con- is the concept of capitalism capitalism is basically the root cause for all the miseries and injustices uh, suffered by the workers or the poor class according to karl marx the root of all economic injustices is the concept of capitalism he traced the, the root of all economic injustices to the concept of capitalism what is capitalism it is an economic and political system in which a country's trade and industry are controlled and owned by private owners for profit what is capitalism an economic and a political system in which a country's trade and industry are controlled by private owners for what for making profit for profits that is what is capitalism so he found out that there is always a clash between the two classes in society the two classes are laborer and the capitalist the laborers and the capitalists so uh, he is the man who postulated he is a philosopher who initiated the class war and he pointed out that ultimately the proletariat would win that was his philosophy that was his uh, marxian philosophy 
His social and economic theory completely revolutionized the political thought of the Victorian era. His social and economic theory completely brought about a revolution in the field of, in the realm of political thought. The social and economic theory propounded or enunciated by Karl Marx completely revolutionized the, the political thoughts during the Victorian age, Victorian era. So the Marxian philosophy enunciated by Karl Marx had a far-reaching effect all over Europe, including England. It had a far-reaching effect or result. It produced a great effort, effect or result all over Europe, including England. Another personality who had an impact on the age was Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud, the founder of the father of modern psychology, Sigmund Freud. He was an Austrian, Sigmund Freud. So another personality who had an impact on the age was Sigmund Freud, the Austrian, the, who is known as the father of modern psychology. And through his path-breaking, means innovative or pioneering book, The Interpretation of Dreams, which was published in 1900. What is the book's name? What is the great work's name? The Interpretation of Dreams, The Explanation of Dreams. Dreams. The Interpretation of Dreams, which was published in 1900. Through that book, he showed that the more Thieves of our behavior lie not in our rational and conscious minds, but in the irrational realm or the unconscious, which manifests only in our dreams. So he postulated very shocking theories in the form of psychoanalysis or psychoanalytic method, or in brief, in short, in a Understandable way we can say a talking way, psychoanalysis. So the great work, his masterpiece, the path breaking, path breaking means pioneering, forerunning or innovative book, The Interpretation of Dreams, which was published in 1900, he showed that. The motives of our behavior, that means all our actions, the motives, the reasons of our behavior lie not in our rational and conscious mind, the logical, rational means logical and conscious mind, you know, mind has uh, three main relapse or drives, conscious mind, subconscious mind and the unconscious mind. You know, his theory is very shocking that, you know, all our behavior, the reasons behind the behavior, lie not in our rational, conscious mind, but in the irrational realm, in the, illo the illogical realm, unreasonable realm of the unconscious, unconscious mind. And you know, these motives, or uh, the uh, reasons for our behavior will sometimes manifest or show themselves through our dreams. Our dreams are very significant in such a way, such a manner. The dreams that we see often see, the dreams that we often see in our uh, unconscious mind, whether they are latent or memorable, such a dreams are of course the reasons for the behavior that we exhibit. And he also points out that all our activities, all our uh, behavioral patterns have reasons. Even an accident that we enter into, even an accident that we commit has its motive of reason in our uh, unconscious mind. There is a shocking theory. Every action has its reason, which is in our unconscious mind, unconscious realm. That is the shocking theory that Sigmund Freud, that is the Freudian theory. That is it.
what is his theory? He pointed out that through the seminal work, the interpretation of dreams which was published in 1900, he showed that the motives of our behavior lie not in our rational and conscious minds, but in the rational realm, rational field, realm means field or area of the unconscious, which manifests, you know, the unconscious, manif unconscious realm or unconscious drive or unconscious field often manifests through our dreams. You know, Sigmund Freud is considered to be the founder of psychological approach to psychology, which looks to unconscious tries to explain human behavior. Sigmund Freud is considered to be the founder of psychology, psychoanalytic approach. The psychological approach is psychoanalytic approach. Psychoanalytic approach. Psychoanalysis. To psychology which looks to the unconscious drives, unconscious areas, unconscious realms to explain human behavior, that is what I explained just now, you know, all our behavioral patterns, how they are reasons in our unconscious mind, unconscious drives. There is something in the psychology is always interesting to study, you know, all our behavior, all our actions, actually, uh, lie in the unconscious drives. You know, that was the post, that was the postulate, the main postulate that he enunciated, that he described, that he explained. By the way, Freud was born in 6th May 1856, 6th May 1856 and died in the year 1939, in September 23rd, 23rd September, 19. 39, 1939. He died in the year 1939, 23rd September. And Freud, Sigmund Freud, earnestly believed that. He believed that the mind is responsible for both conscious and unconscious decisions that it makes. The conscious as well as unconscious decisions that the that we take, that we take, that we often make. Our mind is responsible. Our mind is certainly responsible for both conscious and the unconscious decisions that uh, we do often take. That was his uh, psychology. That was his. That was the cardinal or principal element of his psychoanalysis or psychoanalytic method or psychoanalytic approach. We get. His psychoanalytic approach contains the principle that mind is responsible for all conscious and unconscious decisions that we take, that human beings take. Such a powerful is human mind. So according to Sigmund Freud, mind has three main elements. Mind has three main drives or realms. Most important realms, they are the id. I did, ego, 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 and super ego, S U P E R E G O, super ego. These are the three main elements, main as three main aspects for the mind. Freud believed to comprise a person's personality. Freud is of the opinion that human personality or a man's personality or a person personality is comprised of the three aspects. The three elements of the mind, such as the either ego and super ego, the either ego and super ego uh, form to constitute, they are grouped to constitute the person's personality. A person's personality is comprised of the three aspects of human mind, such as the either ego and the super ego. What are these things? Very interesting, you know, the id, 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 it is completely unconscious, it is the unconscious driver, it is the unconscious realm, id, and also id comprises, id consists of, id consists of all our natural instincts, a person's instincts, desires, etc., 
it consists of the desires or the it is actually the pleasure seeking element the pleasure seeking element it consists of all the instincts like taste hunger and sexual desires sexual desires and also i should uh, remind you the fact that according to freudian theory all our actions are based on the sexual instinct or sexual desire which he calls libido l i b i d o libido sexual desire is the root cause of all our actions according to freud it is very shocking to the uh, intellectual circumstances see the id what is id id comprises of or consists of or includes all our basic instincts basic feelings or it is a pleasure seeking relam it is a pleasure seeking drive id and ego ego is realistic it is reality it is actually a reality it is reality it is a uh, more conscious a uh, conscious element in it ego ego so it is the pleasure seeking element and the ego is the reality element and super ego is the morality element it uh, may say restrained on the person using the morality it considers the mores and the principles that our society is having the society society is uh, putting forth that is what is super ego and you know see often id and ego are in conflict id the basic instinct we want to perform we want to materialize the basic instincts like our desires and the sexual uh, desires but you know see it is prompted by it is encouraged by the ego and the restrained or control is produced by super ego so uh, and often the id and the ego are in clash then super ego acts as the mediator mediator we are withdrawn from some of the actions because of the interference of the super ego super ego otherwise we will be let forward to so many damages we will cause so many damages to the society and it is super ego that prevents people from causing damages to the society that is the important role of super ego which are the through elements basic elements that uh, consists of human personality either ego and super ego and you know when either and ego are in clash we suffer from anxiety and all that and you know the pleasure seeking drive asks us to do something and it is compelled by uh, ego and then the restraint or the control is produced by uh, super ego super ego that is why we are always in an anxiety and often see this imbalance is corrected by the psychoanalyst there is an analyst and the analyst analyst is the patient analyst is the man who does all the therapeutic things okay see this is something of a, a great study it requires a deep study the psychoanalysis so i have just mentioned it. i have just mentioned to uh, show the importance of the psychoanalytic method psycho psychoanalytic approach enunciated by sigmund freud so anyhow you should remember that the id ego and super ego are the three aspects of the mind freud believed to comprise a person's personality the id is a set of coordinated instinctual desires instinctual desires basic instincts the super ego plays a critical and moralizing role it plays super ego the last one uh, see it does the role of a mediator uh, it uh, what does it do it plays a critical and moralizing role and the ego is the organized and a realistic agent 
ego is a realistic truth. So what is the shocking theory of psychoanalysis? All human actions are based on the sexual aspect, sexual desire. Very shocking to the public. Anyhow, all these things greatly contributed to the uh, altered thinking of England uh, for the next century, for the 20th century. They paved the way for the altered thinking in the next century. Or we can say that all these things like uh, Sigmund Freud and the Marxian philosophy uh, expounded by Karl Marx, Karl Marx and Sigmund Freud, they greatly contributed to the altered thinking or changed thinking or the revolutionized thinking of England in the coming century or in the next century, that is the 20th century. They were the people who sowed the Swedes for a changed thinking in the coming century. Then let us see the important events that right, influenced the Victorian age or Victorian era. So one of the great uh, events was the great exhibition, the great exhibition of 1851. You should remember the year, year of this great exhibition or it was a, an expo, great exhibition of 1851. It was a clear proof of the achievement of the industrial, industrialization. You can say that it was a clear case of the achievement of industrialization. It was a clear proof or evidence of the achievement of industrialization. It was the child of industrialization. What? The great exhibition of 1851. It was a clear proof of the achievements of industrialization. It was held in, where did the exhibition uh, happen? Where was it conducted? Where was it held? It was held in a specially constructed, specially built crystal palace in Hyde Park. Hyde Park is the grade one park in the central London, central part of London, Hyde Park. H-Y-D-E-P-R-K, Hyde Park. So the great exhibition of 1851 was held in a specially built crystal palace in Hyde Park. The Crystal Palace was a huge construction using over a million feet of glass. It was completely constructed with the help of glass, with glass. That means the viewers could stand outside and see the exhibition or the expo or the uh, great exhibition of age which even could be viewed from outside because the, uh, the palatial building was totally made of glass. And you know the Crystal Palace was a huge construction using over a million feet, 10 lakh, over a 10 lakh feet of glass. So it was specially designed by Sir Joseph, Joseph Patton, the English architect and he was also an MT. He was also an MP. Joseph Paxton, Joseph Paxton, Joseph P-A-X-T-O-N, Paxton, Joseph Paxton was the architect of the glass palace or the crystal palace Joseph Sir Joseph Paxton it was specially constructed on the supervision of Sir Joseph Paxton he was a great architect English architect and also he served as an MP in order to showcase in order to project on show, showcase England's greatness to the world the aim of the 1851 great expression was to showcase England's greatness to the world. And you know, the exhibition was from May 1st to October 15th, 1851. The exhibition was conducted during the period from May 1st to 15th October 1851. That is the great exhibition which is show which was intended, which was made to showcase England's greatness to the world. So about uh, 6 million people were supposed to have visited the exhibition. Almost 6 million means 60 lakh, 60 lakh people were supposed to have visited the exhibition. Uh, which was the first of its kind in the world, uh, throughout the world it was the first of its kind. The exhibition was the first of its kind. 
the exhibition revealed to the world the tremendous strides, tremendous improvements, tremendous developments that England had taken. Stride means the gems, the long strides, the long gems uh, England had made. So the exhibition revealed to the world. What did it reveal to the world? It revealed to the world the tremendous strides that England had taken. Then let us discuss uh, a war, the Crimean War. Crimean War and its influence on the society, English society, during the Victorian age. The Crimean War, C R I M E A N, Crimean War. And also the first war of Indian independence. We have to study uh, the impact of the first war of Indian independence, or the Britishers humorously called as the Sepoy Sepoy Mutiny. Sepoy. Sepoy mutiny. Sepoy mutiny. The Crimean War and the first war of Indian independence or the Sepoy mutiny were two significant events that marred, that destroyed the peace of the age. Actually, Victorian age was very peaceful, calm and quiet and that very peace was destroyed or disturbed by these two incidents. What were the two incidents? The Crimean War and also the first war of Indian independence or the Sepoy mutiny. These two were the significant events that marked, destroyed the peace of the age. The Crimean War was fought between, that we have discussed in our previous class. The Crimean War was fought between Russia and the Allied forces of Great Britain, France, the Ottoman Empire of Turkey and Sardinia. For the participants of the Crimean War, the Crimean War was fought between Russia on one side, Russia, and the Allied forces on the other side, there was the Allied forces, Allied forces of Great Britain, France, the Ottoman Empire, that is Turkey, and Sardinia. The Allied forces wished to restrain the Russian expansion in the Black Sea. What was the reason, what was the cause of the war? The Allied forces, Great Britain, France, the Ottoman Empire and Sardinia. They wished to restrain the Russian expansion. They wished to put a restraint. They wished to control the expansion of Russia in the Black Sea. Black Sea, you know, Black Sea between, lies between. Eastern Europe and Western Asia, Black Sea. Lies between Eastern Europe and Western Asia. So the Allied forces wish to restrain Russian expansion in the Black Sea region. The war came to an end with the Treaty of Paris in 1856. Finally, the war came to an end with the victory of the Allies. The war came to an end with the Treaty of Paris by the Treaty of Paris in 1856. According to the treaty, Russia was forced to retain the territories that it had occupied in the Ottoman Empire. By the Paris Treaty in 1856, Russia was forced to, it was compelled or impelled to retain, give back the territories or the provinces that it had occupied, it had taken in the Ottoman Empire. So Russia was completely uh, defeated and also it was forced, Russia was forced to retain the territories it had occupied in the Ottoman Empire. And also for the Russia was prohibited from sending its warships on the Black Sea and from building any fortification or fortresses, fortification in that area. And also Russia was prohibited, Russia was prevented from sending its uh, warships on the Black Sea and from building or constructing fortification, the fortress uh, which were used, the fortresses which were used for war, which were used for battle, for hiding in, hiding in, for building any fortification in that area. The Crimean War was the first war to be covered by journalists and also another importance of the Crimean War was that the Crimean War was the first war to be covered by the journalists. Journalists had an opportunity to cover up the news of the war. So it was for the first time that journalists got an opportunity for covering up the incidents uh, during the war. 
it was in Crimean War. So the Crimean War was the first war to be covered by journalists. Mm -hmm. The newspaper articles and the photographs from the war friend, the newspaper articles and the photographs from the war friend stirred the emotions of the people. The, the newspaper reports, the newspaper articles and the photographs from the war friend actually stirred the mood, the emotions or the feelings of the people. People were highly motivated and uh, moved by the newspaper articles and the photographs taken from the war friend by the journalists. The Crimean War brought to its forefront, another important incident, the Crimean War brought it to its forefront. Florence Nightingale, who made nursing a very respectable profession. It was Crimean War which brought to the forefront. Florence Nightingale, the lady with the lamb, who made nursing a respectable, respectable, who made nursing a very respectable profession. Nightingale, along with the 38 uh, dedicated women, went to the help, went to help her. The wounded soldiers in the hospital at uh, Skewtery, Skewtery, an area in Ottoman Empire. What did Nightingale, Florence Nightingale do? Florence Nightingale, along with the 38 dedicated women went to help the wounded soldiers in the hospitals at the Skewtery in Ottoman Empire. This proved the origin and this incident proved the origin of modern nursing and the Red Cross movement. This paved the way for modern nursing as well as Red Cross movement. After the end of the Crimean War in 1856, by the Paris Treaty, we already found. After the end of the Crimean War in 1856, trouble broke out in India in 1857. Trouble actually broke out in India in the year 1857. What happened in India? The British Trading Company, how was it known? The British East India Company. The English East India Company or the British East India Company. You know, the British Trading Company that came to India in 1600. When did the East India Company come to India? 1600. Gradually became very powerful in India, Indian subcontinent. What happened? This is a trading company, British East India Company, who came to trade with India, gradually became very powerful in Indian subcontinent. At the time of the rebellion, at the time of the uh, first Indian War of Independence, or as the Britishers called the uh, Sepoy Mutiny, at the time of the rebellion, rebellion, struggle, war. Most of India was under the control of the British East India Company. At the time of the war, first war of Indian Independence, or the Sepoy Mutiny, as the Britishers described, you know, most of India was under the control of the British East India Company. Most of the Indian territories were under the control of the British East India Company when actually uh, uh, the first war of Indian independence started. The immediate cause of the first war of Indian independence was the introduction of the cartridges. Cartridges means the case of the bullets. Cartridges. Greased in the fat of cows and pigs which had to be bitter off before usage. You know the cartridges or the casing or case in which the bullets and the bullets were kept, bullets and shells were kept, bullets were kept, had to be bitten off, had to be bitten off before usage. That was the immediate cause of the first Indian war of independence. It was the introduction of the cartridges by the British East India Company. The cartridges greased in the fat of cows and pigs, which had to be bitten off before usage. This was anathema. Anathema means a taboo, taboo or prohibition. So this kind of biting of something which is greased with the uh, the fat of cows or pigs was anathema. Anathema means taboo or prohibition. 
to both Muslims and Hindus. Not only for Hindus, it was also a great tab for Muslims. So this was Sanathima uh, to both Hindus and Muslims who formed the majority of the army. The majority of the army was made by the Hindus and Muslims or formed with the, the majority of the army was formed with the Hindus and Muslims at that time. Apart from this, apart from this reason, this cause, the Indians were very unhappy over several other issues. The Indians were actually or in fact unhappy over several other problems or issues such as forced conversions by the missionaries. At that period, missionaries uh, were in India, they were they forcibly converted Hindus into Christians. So this was this caused a great uh, hatred in the minds of the Indians. So it was another major issue for the uh, praising of the uh, the um, war of independence, war of Indian independence. So what was the uh, another reason? Apart from this, the Indians were very unhappy over uh, several issues such as the forced conversions, compelled conversions by the missionaries, English missionaries, converted the Hindus into Christianity by using force. And also there was another rule, another uh, order created by Lord Delhousie, Lord Delhousie, the Governor General, during the period of English East India Company, the head of British administration was called the Governor General. Only after the East India Company went from India, the Viceroy came. Viceroy became the head of the British government in India. Till then, it was Governor General. You know, the doctrine of labs, it was the order or a rule created by Lord Dalhousie. Lord Dalhousie, doctrine of labs. What is it? According to this law, according to this order, according to this law, according to this doctrine, what happened? The kingdoms of childless kings, if there was no heir to a kingdom, the kingdoms of childless kings would lapse to the British, would fall off the property of the British. The kingdoms which had no heir would fall in the hands of the British, fall or would lapse to the British. This doctrine was called uh, the doctrine of lapse. Lapse. This was this also caused great resentment in uh, local kings and local nobles. So, who enunciated, who uh, founded the doctrine of labs, Lord Dalhousie. The doctrine of labs by Lord Dalhousie and uh, the near total destruction of uh, indigenous cottage industries through the flooding of finished British goods and also the indigenous local industries were marred or destroyed. By the flooding means by overflowing of the finished British goods in the markets. You know, the Britishers found India as a uh, rich source of raw material. They took the raw material from India and they finished the, uh, they processed in their land in England and they sold them as finished goods in India. So they looked upon, they considered India as a good market for their finished goods and as a result our uh, indigenous or local cottage industries were destroyed. They were completely marred uh, by the flooding or overflowing of finished goods into Indian markets. That is the next reason, the near total destruction of indigenous cottage industries through the flooding of finished British goods. The rebellion the first war of Indian independence or Sepoy mutiny broke out in Meerut. It broke out in Meerut. Which province? Meerut. And a rapidly spread to several parts of the country. And very soon, it fastly or rapidly spread to the various parts of country, various parts of India. 
Although it began as the rebellion of the sea boys, it is now, although, although it started as a mutiny of the sea boys or a rebellion or a praising by the sea boys, so princes, princes, nobles, nobles means local nobles, noble people, and other people who resented to the British presence in India, and other leaders. Other people who resented, who hated the British presence in our soil, who resented to the British presence in India, also joined in it, also joined in this uprising or rebellion or in this movement or the war, war of the first Indian independence. You know, although it began as a rebellion by the sepoys, so on, the princes, nobles and other people who resented to the British presence in India also joined in it. It gave rise to several leaders like Mangal Pandey. Mangal Pandey. You might have heard of Mangal Pandey. In 2005, the historical character Mangal Pandey was filmed by Amir Khan. The lead role was played by Amir Khan. Amir Khan, Rani Mukherjee. Om Puri were the main actors in Mangal Pandey. Mangal Pandey was originally he was a sepoy, he was a soldier, a, an ordinary soldier in the army. And he took the leadership of the mutiny. He was the uh, leader among the soldiers who uh, uh, rebelled against the British first. That is Mangal Pandey. So it gave rise to several leaders like Mangal Pandey, the ordinary soldier who uh, rose to the level of a great hero great uh, memorable hero and uh, Rani Lakshmi Bhai Rani Lakshmi Bhai means Chansi Rani she is also known as Chansi Rani Chansi Vasai province in Maratha it is now a district Chansi is a district in UP Uttar Pradesh Chansi Rani Rani Lakshmi Bhai recently in 19 sorry in 1953 it was filmed. 1953 it was filmed by uh, the Bollywood. It was a famous Hindi film. In 1953 and uh, recently 2019, Kangana ran out. Kangana ran out to produce the, this film. And she led the, she took the lead role in this film. Chansi Rani. Chansi Rani Mangal Pandey it gave rise to several leaders like uh, Mangal Pandey. Rani Lakshmi Bhai of Chansi and uh, Tandia Thok. Tandia Thok or Tandia Thopi. Tandia Thok. Tandia Thok. He became one of the great uh, leaders during the War of Independence. Tandia Thopi. Actually, the surprising or rebellion or the revolt ended in failure as the rebels lacked the proper leadership. The rebels. Our leaders lacked proper leadership and uh, ammunition. Ammunition means bullets, uh, uh, shells, etc. They lacked the uh, modern warfare. Whereas Britishers had a gun and we were fighting with the Swedes. And uh, because of the lack of ammunition and proper leadership, uh, the rebellion of 1857 failed. It, however, made clear that. Greater achievement, what is it? It may, however, made clear that the company no, no longer could control the administration of such a large country. So, we could give a warning to the British East India Company. So, even though the rebellion failed tragically, it made clear that the company, the British East India Company, was no longer was in a state of controlling our administration. The company no longer could control the administration of such a large country like India. After it ended, the British government took over India from East India Company. So it was another stride during the Victorian era or Victorian age. After the ending of the first war of Indian independence, what happened? The British government took over India from East India Company. And Queen Victoria, was declared the Empress of India. It was during the period of uh, Queen Victoria and naturally Queen Victoria was uh, declared the Empress of India and this was a 
proud moment for the victorians to the victorians this was a very proud moment and these are the incidents as well as personalities who influenced the victorian age okay